Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. In this video, we will be doing a first look at the game Bismarck. This is a second World at War C game designed by Mike Benninghoff, PhD. This is from Avalanche Press. So as you might guess from the title, this is a naval game in the um, long-running Second World War at Sea series covering basically uh, what you would expect from the title, the activities of, you know, the Germans and the allies in the early years of the war in kind of the North Atlantic area, uh, centered around, of course, the famous German battleship Bismarck. This game actually is kind of, I just picked this up. This is, you know, in the, the new trend at Avalanche where they're going to more of a bagged presentation um, instead of a boxed presentation, which saves them some money. And it comes in a bag. I already pulled it out of the bag. Here's our bag. So you get basically a whole bunch of stuff here. I mean, it's fairly uh -huh. thick, as you can see. It has a back cover that it would, ha would have had if this were a box. So you can kind of get a little bit of information here. You know, in May of 1941, the newly commissioned German battleship Bismarck set out for the North Atlantic in company with the cruiser Prinz Eugen on a commerce raiding mission. She captured no merchant ships but sank a British battle cruiser and was herself destroyed in a hail of shells. Gives you a look at some of the counters. You've got your standard format counters that are used largely for smaller ships and aircraft. The long pieces here for various uh, destroyer and up in size or tonnage, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, ships, warships. So you got a variety of that in different national colors here. We've got uh, Poland, we've got Germany, the U.S., the British, the French, etc., etc., uh, for a mo brief moment, Bismarck captured the world's imagination, and now you can replay her mission and also all of the other German commerce raids into the Atlantic. So this is the surface raiders that the Germans tried to employ as part of their uh, strategy to kind of, um, you know, take out convoys heading to heading to England or Europe in general in the early years of the war. Uh, so for time, 30 minutes to many hours, depending obviously on what you're playing. This is a two-player game. You can play it solitaire. There is some so there are some solitaire rules. Um, you may or may not want to house rule some of it um, to kind of take out some of the maybe counterintuitive strategies. Uh, we'll talk about it when we when we do the gameplay video. But this this game system employs both an operational map, which is a large scale map of the in this case North Atlantic. And the, the various forces move on that map. And um, there's hidden information because obviously with uh, early, especially early years of the naval war, you weren't always quite sure where the enemy forces were. And there was a lot of, you know, searching for enemy forces and then, uh, you know, combat if and when you actually found them. The combat part takes place on the tactical map, which is kind of a standard. In this case, it's a standard map as opposed to something like South Pacific, where you have one that's more of the, um, it's designed specifically for the area of the Iron Bottom Sound, although that game comes with a generic tactical map as well. This game has the, ta the generic tactical map, which is fine because open sea, there's not a whole lot there aside from water, so it works uh, for what it is. Uh, but to get back to what we have here, so our scale is 36 miles per sea zone. And this, the operational map, it, it's hexes, or, or boxes, I'm sorry, it's boxes. 210 double-sided, um, 420 half-inch square. Playing pieces, you've got two 34 by 22-inch operational maps, so you'd end up with a very large area to work with. Um, and we'll look at that here in a second. A rule book is 32 pages long, 45 scenarios in the game, difficulty level, two stars. That's probably fair. It's it's a medium complexity game. There's um, it's not overly complex, and you can pick it up fairly easily. Uh, it's not a simple game, but it's not overly burdened by a ton of rules. There's rules for all the various types of you know, like you have your aircraft rules and your search rules and all kinds of things like that. And we'll talk about that a little bit too. So it's fair for solitaire play. Again, that's probably fair. <laughs> you know. Um, because it is a two-player game. But like I said, you can play it solitaire. You just have to kind of uh, somewhat randomize the on the operational map 
either either one of the forces or both of the forces to kind of you know handle that cat and mouse hidden information system where you're actually seeking out your enemy the tactical map is completely solitaire friendly because the forces are out there you 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 do for both you work both sides to the best of your ability you know in the classic solitaire mode for war games and it works out just fine it's more in the operational map where it's really um the two player system shines best so let's flip this back over and start looking at our components so here's our uh, playbook basically scenario book so it's bound which is nice and it is you know a decent number of pages 60 plus pages long and at the back you do have designer notes um, one thing about avalanche press there is a lot of historical uh, information in the game they, they strive for fidelity as far as the historical stuff goes which is really nice now, as far as scenarios, we did see that there were 45 scenarios in here. So you have some special rules that kind of sit on top of the series rules. And you can see you can see what they are. Obviously, there are submarines in the game as well. Um, you've got air allotment tables for both sides. There's, you know, things to handle machinery failure. North Atlantic, so you're going to have to possibly deal with some pack ice. Salvaged aircraft, supply missions, transports, twilight turns, all kinds of stuff. And then you get into the scenarios here on page 7. Starting right, you know, fairly three weeks into the war in September of 39. You can see that some of the ships that are in here from the German side. you got the Scharnhorst and the Scheer, the Gneisse now, the Hipper, all the, you know, all the kind of famous, famous ones, I'm um, sure... Uh, well, I'm not sure, but you know, we'll we'll look at the look at the counters in a bit. But you can see that we have two types of scenarios. So you have your operational scenarios, which take place on the operational map, and then if you find your opponent, you go to the tactical map. But then there are also battle scenarios, which are simply played on the battle map. And you can see here cruisers in the dark. So this one would be played on the tactical map. You can see the forces. You've got uh, the sheer. Uh, and the light cruiser Leipzig, and then, you know, a handful of destroyers on the Axis side, and then on the Allied side, the British have three light cruisers and four destroyers. And so you'll go through and you'll have various various forces, all based on historical situations to, to a large extent. And there are a ton of scenarios in here, a ton. So you can see there's, you know, like... Like we saw in the back, there are 15 or 45 rather scenarios on in here. So this is this is um, this is nice. Oh, we can look at this, I guess, while we have it. So here are the playing pieces, just to give an example of what they look like. So this is your long piece, the ship, you know, your big ships, and it's the Lutsov. So you've got your national flag, your ship number, um, armored cruiser one, I guess, movement. Gunnery factors, there are three levels of gunnery, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Your ship name, float plane icon, if it has a float plane, it will have the icon. Torpedo factors, how many torpedoes essentially does it carry? And then it's anti-aircraft factors. Then for aircraft, you have an altitude rating, a landing type, which basically means is it a land, land aircraft or a carrier or a uh, carrier or float plane aircraft, air to air combat value, damage, naval attack, aircraft type. Uh, this would be a Beaufort, I believe. Uh, land attack value and its range and endurance. And again, when we do the play, the play video, we'll talk about some of that stuff. You have air base cards where you would put your, uh, your aircraft, basically your squadrons, you put them into various categories for what their mission is. These are for the Allied aircraft carriers, so you can, you can see you've got Furious, Arc Royal, Victorious, Argus uh, from the uh, British side. Then you have uh, Ranger, Yorktown, Wasp, Long Island, and Eagle on the American side. We've got our uh, operational maps. We'll save this for, uh, for, the, for the moment and look at that in a bit. And here we have a counter sheet. So this is your typical small counters. So you can see you've got destroyer escorts here, um, some transports, and then obviously the various forces are in their national colors, so to speak. So we've got German here, British here. Uh, we also have some aircraft down here at the bottom. 
with their various types. So your Wellington, your Beauforts, your Hudsons, etc. Over here, we've got some American ships and some uh, some uh, American aircraft. I think I think these are American aircraft. So we have one counter sheet there. They're double sided uh, because sometimes you can't tell what they are. Um, Oilers, etc. There's a, it's a very in depth game with a lot of a lot of nuance and uh, depth to it. Now here are the long pieces or some of the long pieces. So we do have the uh, the game that's in the title, the Bismarck. You have the Tirpitz, the Scharnhorst, and the the Queen Elizabeth. So you've got some British mixed in here. Gneisenau, now, um, Lutzov, Scheer, Hipper, Eugen, the Graf Zeppelin, the Peter Strasser, the Cone the Leipzig, and so on and so forth. Um, no Graf Spee. I was wondering if the Graf Spee was in this or not. But you do also have a bunch of British ships, of course. Some Canadian ships. The Ottawa, the St. Laurent, and the Assiniboine, I think. <laughs> um, and some French ships at the bottom. We even have a Polish ship here in the corner. More aircraft. So you have uh, some German aircraft. ME 109, more German aircraft, and etc. Various air forces, and then task force flags for the for the Germans. Because on the operational map, you put a task force flag, um, a task force counter, and then on the uh, task force sheet, which we'll see in a little bit, is where you would actually have your um, your ships that make up that task force. So here you have various air bases for the Axis, and they have uh, basically the uh, hex ID or box ID in this case for what e each each one is. And then again, just like we saw with the aircraft carrier one, you have various missions. Um, so you have all of these. Then you have some uh, some carriers, the two carriers, the two German carriers. Then we've got our Allied air bases again with coordinates basically. And we have another sheet of ships. So this is more British ships primarily. Looks like entirely British, actually. Here we have some Americans. So you've got several battleships here. Arkansas, New York, Texas, New Mexico, Mississippi, Idaho. And then our four um, carriers. And we've got some French ships here at the bottom as well. Then you have your ship data book. So the way combat works with the ships you have here, well, let's go to kind of a, so here we have British capital ships, right? So got the battleship Queen Elizabeth and that's how many primary factors it has, secondary, tertiary, and then as it takes damage and you have hull as well and fuel capacity and you'll mark these off. So basically you make a photocopy of this and when you're playing, you mark off. If it takes damage, prime if its primary guns get knocked out or something, you would X out a box. Same thing with hull. As it takes hull damage, you mark it off, and then eventually it's going to be either put out of action or sunk, potentially, based on that. You can also you can also uh, track its fuel consumption as it's you know steaming about the North Atlantic, seeking out its uh, German prey. And so you've got all the all the British battleships that are in the game, plus their battle cruisers, heavy cruisers. And then it goes down and you've got uh, the light, the aircraft carriers, the lighter ships, so light cruisers and a whole, every ship in the game is in here. So every counter, every ship counter will be in here somewhere based on what class it is. So you can find it by its, by its, you know, if you're looking for DD-89, it's right here, the Highlander. And you can see it's got one tertiary gun, two torpedoes, its movement factor, which I didn't mention. It's relatively thin-skinned hull, and it's fuel. So that this is an important book that you will use a lot when you're playing the game. Then we have our series rules, which comes with some, uh, you know, basically this this will come with any Second World War at Sea game that you have, and these are just the rules for the game. So pretty straightforward. Like I said, the rules run, what, 30, 35-ish pages, 36, oh, 40 pages, I guess. 40 pages long, but some of these are optional. Um, but it's not really all that complicated. So, 
um, I've done I done I've done some videos on Second World uh, South Pacific rather from the Second World War at sea, where you can see kind of how operational and tactical play works in the game. And we have our cards here. So this would be one of your task force cards where you would put out the ships that comp comprise each task force. This keeps the operational map relatively clean. When you go to the tactical map, you'd actually put the ships themselves out on the map. Then we have flights uh, for your aircraft as well. So you have one for each side. I think you can use whichever, whichever one you wish for each side. So if you want to make this the German side and that the allied one, it's up to you basically. But each side gets its own task force card. Here is our tactical map. We'll look at that again in a moment. And more player player cards here. So there are a lot of tables, as you might expect. Well, maybe not a lot, but there are tables. So you've got your sea air here. We've got takeoff and landing because you could have things happen on, you know, takeoff or landing. Uh, you know, if you've got, you can see if you get a result of negative two or less. So you can't roll die and get a negative two, but you take the DRMs here for cloudy weather or rain or squall. Storm gives you a minus four. That's for landing only because they can't take off in a storm. Uh, weather is gale or airborne aircraft eliminated. So if you get into a gale, you're going to lose all your aircraft. And then night, night stuff as well. Take off from landing on carrier or water is a minus one. Safer to land on land, of course. Uh, landing on a carrier with more than half of its deck boxes destroyed. So you have damage on our ship. Uh, ship data cards, you'll have damage to the deck of your carriers as well. Air search for looking for enemy aircraft or ships. Uh, your cap and interception or air search and then your air search results. And on the back, target location, cap interception, sweep interception of cap, sweep interception of an anti-sub um, anti patrol, air to air, any aircraft bombing and aerially uh, fired torpedoes, land bombing, and uh, MTB. Uh, MTB. I'm. <laughs> I, I can't remember what MTB stands for at the moment. Uh, it's been a little bit since I played, but um, you have various tables for that as well. Um, I will look it up and I will put a note so that you can see what that actually is because I am having a brain fart at the moment. Then we've got sub attacks, sub versus sub, torpedo, all submarine stuff. You've got shore bombardment, minefields, and sweeping, amphibious stuff, ground combat, uh, sub contact. This is more submarine stuff. Your anti sub sweeps, your anti sub submarine warfare, and hunter killer aircraft. And on this one, this is a log sheet. So you would use this um, to mark the movement of your forces. So you would they give you one, you obviously photo, photocopy these and use one each time for each player. More combat tables for task forces, initiatives, sighting ranges, gunnery and ship launch torpedoes, and then on the back, more stuff about running aground, refloating, pursuit, excess damage, armored flight decks, aircraft losses, emergency repairs, and foundering. And then we have the back card again of the basically the what would be the, the back of the box, I guess. Talking about the Second World War at Sea Plan Z game and Cruel Sea, which I also have, and this is um, something that I will, will get to the table. To play this, you need both Bismarck and Arctic Convoy. Arctic Convoy has not, I don't think, been printed yet. I have it on order. I'm hoping to get it. I do have Cruel Sea. So once I get Arctic Convoy, I'm going to try to play this because this whole Second Great War at Sea is kind of an ahistorical thing where the First World War basically ended in kind of a stalemate and they had a peace. And then 20 years later, they go back to war again. And so it's in the same time frame, but technology is different. All the great empires that were fought in the First World War still exist. And it's, it's really cool. I love alternate history stuff. So definitely want to check this one out when it comes out. So yeah, Second Great War uh, at Sea Series. And this says it's the foundation, so I guess this is the first one. There are several others. Um, and depending on how much I like this, I may get more. So you've got, as it says here, the ships, airships, helicopters, and airplanes of Imperial Germany, Republic in France, and Imperial Russia. So obviously those didn't exist in the 30s and 40s. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to put this back. 
kind of in the order it was in so that I can just kind of play it straight when I get to it. And, that, that. and now let's look at the maps. Okay, so rather than, you know, kind of blow it up and show everything, I'm just, I'm going to show like segments of the map because I don't want, you know, I'd like to be able to provide a little bit of the detail of the map, which you can't see when you blow it up because this is a 34 by 22 inch and there are two of them. So this is kind of your um, northern map. So you have Greenland over here on the left, obviously in the upper left corner with, you know, your more ice pack area here. Then you have Iceland, of course, dead in the center. You can see Reykjavik is right here. Uh, the Faroe Islands are down here. And then you've got open water going in that direction. So if we slide this over in this direction, that's the other map. Slide this over in this direction. You can see kind of the, the beginning of Norway here. And then if we go down all the way to the bottom of this map, so you have Norway here. You can see Bergen and Horten. Uh, you see some airfield symbols on here that would coincide with those airfield cards that we saw a moment ago. It's got Scapa Flow um, and, the, you know, the northern part of Scotland here. There's an air base at the very bottom in the bottom hex here. Now, if we flip to the other map, so we can see the other side, the southern side of the map. All right. So here's the southern southern half of the map so you have they kind of overlap a little bit because you can see Horten on here um, here's Denmark you've got some German German ports Kiel Hamburg Bremen Wilhelmshaven Rotterdam in the Netherlands Ostend then you've got Dover etc Portsmouth Plymouth etc right Liverpool all that stuff Ireland uh, France so you, it, it comes all the way down to basically the northern coast of Spain. You've got Bordeaux over here. Here's your legend and your weather track. And then of course on the western side, it's open ocean basically. This is all just the North Atlantic from top to bottom. So these are your operational maps. So as I mentioned earlier, you've got boxes instead of hexes, right? So here we're off the coast of Ireland. You can see this is box AZ32. So basically, you know, up here at the very top, which is off shot right now, but you've got AM31, 32, and then AN30, 31, etc. So they're staggered in their rows, but it goes alphabetically. So you go AM, AN, AO, AP, etc. all the way down. The last one on the bottom is CB, but you can see that this is the these are the bo the boxes which are basically you know work similarly to a hex but you can travel in the same kind of directions right you can go northwest northeast can't go directly north basically so you would move in a kind of a zigzag form to move uh north and south so you would put your task force um, counters in here and then the task forces themselves the ships that comprise the task force would be in the off map task force sheet just to kind of keep this relatively clean. All right, so here is our tactical map, pretty straightforward. So again, it's got kind of, um, these have hexes, as you can see, and you have like approach vectors basically uh, for where ships come in, and then you basically maneuver and fight on this map because this is just open water. So uh, I think they do sell kind of a, an island uh, thing that you can put in here if there's islands around or whatever. Um, I don't know that that's really all that appropriate for this particular game because, well, there are islands, but they're, it's not the South Pacific. Let's put it that way. Um, so you have, you have your map, you have some various tables here. Um, they're, they're identical on both sides. So if we just kind of take a look here and zoom in our gunnery and ship launch torpedo modifier so you got your drms right here then you've got your torpedo torpedo damage table for when you based on your roll what happens with with the torpedoes gunnery damage same thing your two main ways of attacking other ships and then you have critical damage table as well so there you have it that is a look at the game bismarck a second world war at sea game from avalanche press designed by mike benninghoff i will do a playthrough of this game probably sometime in january we'll see how things go and what i've what else i've got going on but i am 
I do enjoy this game and I do play it sol solitaire. So we'll talk about how the solitaire stuff works when I play. But I am looking forward to, to doing this and uh, and playing it. I really um, I like the naval stuff. Not gonna lie. So we will take a we will take a look at this in the not too distant distant future. So as always, thank you for watching. Please uh, consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. Feel free to post comments, questions, etc., corrections. Although this is basically an unboxing, so hopefully there aren't any <laughs> too many corrections that are needed. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it. So until next time, my name's Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered, and as always, happy gaming.